This is Margaret Allen. Margaret has an extensive criminal history, so this is not the first time she has been in this type of situation. Unfortunately for her, the charges brought against her will lead her to death row. We've known each other for a long time now. Yeah. Okay. She doesn't remember me. I can't, but I can try to find <laughs> Let me find something. I gotta get a cutter thing. I'll be back. No one needs to ask you want to make a statement and answer questions when I'm away being present. Do you want to talk to me? Huh? I need a lawyer present. Pardon me? I need a lawyer present. You need a lawyer present? Yes, sir. So you're, you're telling me you don't want to talk to me right now? No, sir. Huh? No, sir. You don't want to talk to me. Margaret immediately asks for a lawyer, so the detective must stop all questions regarding the case. Margaret has done the correct thing by refusing to answer questions. However, they already have a confession from one of her accomplices. How you doing? Saying a prayer? Good man. Smart man. That'll work out well. This is Margaret's 18-year-old nephew, Quentin Allen. On February 10th, 2005, Quentin was arrested for an outstanding warrant by the Titusville Police Department in Florida. While he was being processed, he told the police that he had information on the disappearance of a Winda Wright. Winda had been missing for several days, and Quentin explained that he never wanted to be a part of what had happened to her. Okay. All right. Are you all right, buddy? Okay, good. All right, just relax. Okay, and, and spell your last name? Alan, A L L E E N. But I thought y'all said that I could stay at her house. Okay. I don't want you staying at her house. I want you staying someplace hey, safe. Not if jail, you're going to stay anywhere, I have to stay someplace where it's safe. But just not jail? I don't. Wherever it's going to be safe is for you is where I want you. Okay. Wherever that ends up being. And uh, you know what? what if, we, if, if we, if well, we, well, here's what we're going to do. We're gonna, we're gonna talk to you. Because I'm willing to tell okay. everything the way I, but I just don't want to go to y'all. That's y'all said okay. that I wouldn't. Y'all said there I any, could well, Let me ask you a question. Oh, my from my house. Okay. That was what y'all said. Y'all ain't promised me. Right, Miss Allen, is there any reason for you to go to jail? No. Okay. That's none. All right. If there's no reason for you to go to jail, then you shouldn't go to jail. Okay. okay? Quentin is noticeably nervous, and he expresses his fear of jail. The detectives know they are not allowed to make any promises, but they also want to be careful not to scare Quentin away. All right, uh, Mr. Allen, I want to draw your attention to, uh, I believe this whole thing uh, begins from what uh, information I'm getting from other sources. The uh, whole thing begins uh, on February 8th, uh, two days ago. Would that be correct? Yes, sir. Okay, All right. Miss Allen, if you could sit up, you know, it's, it's very important. And, yes, sir. You know, I want to try to get the facts correct. Yes, sir. Like that, okay? All right, I appreciate that. Thank you, sir. Were you at somebody's house? How did this all start? All right. Where were you at when this started? Well, okay, when I came there, it was like 12. I was at the door. I had owed her $200. I gave her her money. Who's her? Okay. Uh, I gave money to Margaret and her money. I'm telling you, it just happened. I gave, I, she had borrowed two hundred dollars. She gave me two hundred dollars in rocks. Okay, so now you're there. Margaret Allen is there. Mm -hmm. This gentleman you just described is there. And JT. Does anybody else come there at any particular time? Uh. No. Not, no, not while we was there. Cause shortly after, later okay. on that day, not the whole time we was there. But we did leave, like I said, to go pick up the kids. Around that time, I didn't know if okay. someone came. Okay. Well, let me move you a little bit forward, okay? Um... When getting a confession from a suspect, detectives must make sure to ask many clarifying questions. False confessions are given all the time, usually to frame another person or protect the person giving the confession. Quentin was arrested on a separate charge, and he is known to spend time with other criminals. Detectives will listen to the confession but they're always asking themselves why the suspect is confessing and do they benefit from it. While you were at the house, was there, um, did any, did a female show up at the house then? 
Um, yeah, at that period of time, yeah. Okay, and you know what time that was? Um, just came back from, I'm trying to think, I want to get everything right. Just came back yeah, from, you with take the kids. Yeah, you took your time. I ain't looking at 3.15, 2 I say at least 4.35. 435, 530, all up in the About room. Somewhere between 430 and 530. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, on February 8th, mm -hmm. all right, someone shows up. And who is the person that shows up to the house then? Wendell, Wendell. Okay, Wendell. Um, do you know the person's last name? Mm hmm but what? that's that lady. It was a lady? Okay, can you describe the lady? At least 350. Um, Three, uh, 350 what? 350 pounds. She didn't have no shoes. She was gelling, but she didn't take nothing. Okay. And okay, well, we'll get into that, and, uh, and you'll have to explain to me what, what you're talking about in that sense, okay? Quentin claims that he stopped by Margaret's home to drop off $200 that he owed her. While he was there, Wenda Wright, who was the missing person in this case, stopped by. Wenda was not only Margaret's friend, but also her housekeeper. So in other words, we're talking about a black female. You said she's about 350 pounds. Was she tall or short? Mm, she's taller than me. Okay. And uh, what color hair? Mm, black and light. Okay. Do you remember what she was wearing? Yep. Black shorts with a um, black top. Okay. Like a half top and... Shorts? Shorts, but they were turquoise. Turquoise, turquoise blue or something like that. Like a blue or turquoise? Blue or turquoise. Okay. All right. So now uh, she had come to the house. Who was she? Uh, and, and, and you mentioned the name Wenda, did you say? Mm -hmm. I okay. knew it. And, and if I say something and I'm not, I'm not correct, I want you to correct me. Yes, sir. Okay. So you said this woman's name was Wenda and she came to the house. Mm -hmm. And you didn't know her last name? Mm -hmm. Okay. Was she related to anybody in the house now? No. Okay. Was she a friend of anyone in the house? Yes. Then? Who was she a friend of? My, uh, my aunties. Okay. And your auntie. And who was your auntie? Margaret Ann Allen. Margaret Ann Allen. Okay. All right. Uh, now, while she is there, does something transpire? Um, they went in the house. Me and the, the two daughters stayed at the door. Okay. Now, you said uh, you and the two daughters. Two daughters of who? Um, Margaret Ann Allen. Okay. And you know their names? Ivana, Ragu, and Letitia Watkins. So now they're in the house there. Uh, you're in the house. Margaret Allen's in the house. I'm not uh, in the house. I'm at the door with the kids. Margaret and just the You're lady. at the house. The, you're yeah. at the door of the house. I'm on the porch. You're on the porch. Yeah. Okay. But you're basically in the general area of the house. Right. Okay. So now this woman shows up. Does something happen while you're at the house there? After Winda arrived, both she and Margaret would go inside the home, leaving Quentin outside. It turns out, Margaret's purse, which contained $2,000, had gone missing. Margaret believed that Winda had stolen the money while she was cleaning her house, so she decided to confront her about the missing purse. A purse gone. I said, oh, she real mad about that purse. She was like, mm-hmm. I said, it must was a lot of money in there, because if it was two or three hundred dollars, she wouldn't be sweating. So she was like, mm-hmm, must be. Then she came, then, then auntie came to the door. And then when she came to the door, she like had a hand in the pocket. This, now when you say an auntie, you're talking Margaret about Margaret Ann Allen. Allen. Yes. Okay. She had like a hand in the pocket and then she lifted the gun up and she was like, don't let that motherfucker bitch come out this door. If she come out this door, beat her motherfucking ass with a bag, anything. Okay. Now did she tell you, did Margaret Ann Allen tell you why she was saying this, what she was upset No, about? I still ain't even know, you know what I'm saying, how much money or what. All I know was the person was stolen. Me and the kids were trying to figure out <laughs> what was going on. Okay, so she was, basically what you're telling me is that she was accusing uh, Wenda of taking some money of us. Right. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. And also that there was some amount of money involved. Did she happen to say how much money? Mm, no, she didn't say, but all I know is it was, it was like, first she didn't want to say, and then... I knew it had to be a lot because she wouldn't be mad like that. Okay. And she was like, it was six because she had to pay a lawyer. Then she had took six out the bank. Did you find out later on how much money it was? It was at least, 19, she said 19 or 2300 That's what she said. 19 or 2300 Okay. All right. So now she tells you to um, keep Locked her from leaving. Right. Okay. Now... So what do you do to keep uh, Wanda from leaving? I does nothing. She tells, that's when she walks out the house with a gun. She goes back who, who to- Who walked out of the house Margaret, with a gun? Okay. Margaret Ann walks back out the house. With a gun, you said? Right, in her pocket. That's when she tells okay. me that. All right. Now, how do you know she had a gun? Because she had it in her pocket and she lifted it up when she told me not to let her out of the house. I, I looked at it because then afterwards, 
When she left, she said, sit in the house. So she showed you a gun? She told me to sit in the house. She lifted up in her pockets like, don't let that motherfucker bitch out that door. She come out that door, you better beat her motherfucking ass with a stick or a pole. Okay, Just so like she, sh she showed you a gun and told you not to let one to leave. But she told me to go in the house. Okay, was it Kids a... was there. Was it a... What color gun was it? Black. Black gun? Mm -hmm. Was it a revolver or automatic? I don't know too much about guns. I know the look. Okay, um, let me just show you guys. Yeah. Okay, this is an automatic. All right, I'm gonna hold it up here. Does it look like that? Yeah, that thing pulled back and pulled back. Yeah. Okay, so it was an automatic, yes. black automatic. Yes. Okay. Was it a large black automatic or a small? About the size of that or thirty-eight. About the size you know, of this. Okay, that. fine. All right. So, um, basically, uh, so now Margaret Allen leaves the house. Mm -hmm. Okay, and did she, did she does, does Wendy try to leave? Okay, she tells me to stay in the house. And don't Margaret Allen tells you to stay in the right, house. But I don't stay in the house because I don't want to have nothing to do with it. All right. So I sit out the door in front of my little sister, the oldest one, that Vayner Margaret and daughter leg bro. So I sit in her wheelchair in front of the door. Mm -hmm. And then Vayner come talk to me and she was like, bro, I was like, what, baby? She was like, you think that lady took, up, took mama purse? I was like, nah, I don't think she took the purse, baby. And she was like, I don't need the mama just tripping. She must have missed the place somewhere. Hey, did, did Wendy try to leave? Yes. She, she came, she opened the door. I guess I had the key. Right. I was sitting like this, and I had the key in the door, and I had it, like, locked. Okay. But Titi had just went in the house, Margaret and daughter, so she unlocked it. So when Wendy opened the door, I turned around. I was like, where you going, Miss Luna? She's like, I'm going to go home. I say, um... My team Margaret Ann says she don't want you to go nowhere. She says she wants you to wait in the room till she come back. Okay, so she was she like, well, how long? I said, I don't know, like 10 to 15 minutes. She went around to your house. Okay. So when I said, okay, she shut the door and she went back in the house. So day. she chose to stay there. She chose on her own. Okay, all right, fine. Now, uh, Margaret Allen uh, ends up leaving, mm -hmm. and this is your auntie. Mm -hmm. And how long is she gone for? <sighs> At least 20 minutes. Then she come back, she get in the car, and she leave, go somewhere else. Then she come back like 10 minutes after that. Okay. And when she uh, when she finally comes back to mm -hmm. stay, what happens? Is the there any discussion gonna... between her and Wenda? Not right then, because the kids came to the house, then she started making them, getting their bail. And then she went to talk about how Wenda said, the person was back there when she left. Then Wendell said she went to the bathroom and the person was still there. The auntie was saying, well, my bathroom right here, my purse is way down there in my room. She know I was out the door. Why would she walk that far in my room and pee? So she trying to figure out this and figure that. So from my understanding, Wendell was the only person in the house all that day. She was supposed to be over there cleaning fish. She had she purse that took out my auntie hair first, then she started cleaning fish. Mm -hmm. Marie didn't say she didn't let nobody else in the house. Okay. Okay. Until we came home and she went in there to go look for her purse and it was gone. Right. So that's what made her feel like that. Okay. Get me back on track. So now, uh, does, uh, does anything happen, any kind of argument, anything like that, at that point between uh, trying to Margaret, a... Allen, no. and uh, Wenda? No, other than Wenda, she sent my little, she sent Margaret and daughter around to her house to get her some cigarettes. And then she was stuck saying, I don't have your purse, Margaret. I thought you knew me better than that. Um, um, what would I gain from you taking your purse? I remember everything. What do I gain from you taking your purse? And I know what you would do to a motherfucker. Go on and do what you're going to do, Margaret. Beat me. Go on and shoot me. Let me go on to the emergency room so I can go on home. Because well, I now, ain't got your purse. Okay, now let me stop you for one second. You said something about uh, go ahead and shoot me and stuff like that. Did Margaret uh, Allen have a gun in her hand at the time? No, she had to set the gun down because she was like calm. You know what I'm saying? She, at first, she was prolonged but like... You know what I'm saying? Everything's okay. She was just back and forth in the room. You know what I'm saying? Wendell we just sitting there smoking cigarettes. Smoking cigarettes. They saying, I ain't got your purse. And then Auntie was like, pick some plaques in the house. So I started plaiting her out. So then she was like, well, Wendell, um, you need to go on and tell me where my motherfucker purse at. Because um, if you ain't got my purse by the time he done with my motherfucking house, it's really for to get ugly. So Auntie had to say she was going to tie up and leave it in her hallway, and that was gonna scare them, make her give her the purse. Okay, okay. so did she... Uh... So I'm platting the house, platting the house. After she tell her that, I start like doing more plats, because I'm trying to give, you know what I'm saying, I'm willing some time if she got the purse to go on sale with the purse that. Mm -hmm. I'm study telling auntie, I said, well, auntie, just think. I said, you do things so fast. I say, just sometimes you see things you might be wrong, just look. I looked in the microwave, I looked in the refrigerator. I looked on all top of the shelves. I went in her bathroom, checked behind her towels. You know what I'm saying? I'm saying if, if Wendy did just pick the purse or something back there, I took the money. So I'm looking. 
don't find nothing, 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 nothing. What kind of tea still? So she got the first. All right. So then I get done doing the hair. So she get up and she was like, Wendy, you ain't got my mother like a person. And Wendy's like, Mark. Who says that? Well, okay. You know, wind Mark Redown says that. Right, rewind a little bit. <laughs> While I'm planting, and she tell her that. And like I said, I started doing more plants. Wendy, like, get on her knees, and then she just grab her. And she like rocking my auntie and she crying. She like, Margaret, please, please, Margaret, I ain't got your purse. I'm just like, I gotta tell you this. Okay. Just... Now, how does Margaret grab her? How does... She don't. She has no remorse. She like this right here. And then I like, I'm behind her like. You said Wendell yeah. grabbed Margaret? She got on her knees and like yeah. hugged my auntie waist. I was like this right here. My auntie was sitting up trying to be on the couch. I was playing her how Wendell just grabbed her like this. Like, she's, she's hugging or something like that? Yeah, she's hugging yeah. Margaret and like telling yeah. her, I thought you knew me better than this. I didn't take your purse. Right. So Margaret didn't study. She looked back and she was talking about, hmm. Johnny said that bitch was going to do them tears. That bitch got my purse. Right. So I'm like, and then I said, she was like, um, she got my purse. I was like, I don't know. She said, what the fuck you mean you don't know? Just like that. So I was like, mm-hmm. Then she just looked down. And then she got up and that's when she was like, um, well, my purse that went to win, it's like, I don't got your purse. And then she, like, got the tape, and she was like, <sighs> she pulled the tape out, and she was like, well, come on. So when she said that, Wendy was like, 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 she was like, go down the hall. So Wendy just, like, started crying like a newborn baby, and she, like, dropped her whole body down, like, in a corner. Mm-hmm. So I was like, come on, bitch, come on, bitch. <clears throat> okay. So, in other words, Margaret Allen, what does Margaret Allen do to her? Like, it's like hitting, like, come on, bitch. She's just hitting her. Right, because then Wendell how did, had... How did she hit her? She, she, she punching like, her? punching her face because Wendell had that said, come on to beat my ass. I ain't going to fight okay. you back, Margaret. Is, is Wendell fighting back? She don't fight back. No. Not okay. at all. Now, is... Um, you you mentioned something about the tape. Did she do anything with the tape? She tried to... She tried to put the tape on her because she like... She's talking about, come on, Where was she trying to put the tape on her? On her mouth or whatever. Because okay. like, when she told Wendell to come on and Wendell dropped in the corner, she was like, come on, nephew. So I was looking like, come on. And then she was like, come the fuck on. So then I walked over there and she was trying to put the tape on her mouth. And I was like moving the glass. So when it went like, get the glass or try to stab me or something. So I moved the glass. Then the tape went going in her mouth. So then she went to still sitting there. So she went to the hall, she get a bill. So she trying to get it. She like, hold it if you hold her. So I'm like, I'm like, I'm holding her. So you're holding, but at, you're holding I'm, her? I'm one. holding her, but I'm talking to her. Okay. How, are you, how are you me, holding Wanda? I'm, I'm restraining her, but at the same time... How, from the front, from the back? Not even on the front or the back. I'm like sitting down beside her, like holding her hands like this right here while my auntie had her feet. So, so in other words, you got your arms wrapped around Wanda? Right. She's okay. going like this, I'm going like this, she's going like this, I'm going like this. She's like, Quentin, let me go. Right. I let her go like that. Then she'll get up, then my auntie will get the gun. Tell her, I'm hold that big bitch down. If you don't hold her the fuck down, I'm just going to shoot this bitch. So then right. I was like, Wanda, just stay down. Because Angie said she was just going to leave her in the fucking hallway and scared to give her her purse. Right. So I'm like, Wanda, just come on. Just come on, Wanda. Just come on. So then Auntie take, you know how to like ashtray glasses be like, it's in her room. It's like this thick. She take it and she get ready to like to crush her. Because I was sitting on the side of Wanda. So when she got ready to crush her, I jumped in the front of her. So it was what? Like a big ashtray or something? Big ass ashtray. She went to like crush her like that. So I jumped in the front of her. I say, fuck no like that. She's like, no nephew. I say, hell no. Nah. Then she dropped it. Okay. So then she in other dropped words, it. what uh, Margaret Allen wanted you to get out of the way. She wanted to hit her with the ear. Right. She was, was trying, trying to, push to stop her. it. I, I stopped it. I stopped it. She yeah. didn't even get to hit her with it because I jumped in the front of her. She's talking like, no nephew. I say, fuck no. Right. Just like that, and she dropped it. Okay. And then she ran, and then she got another belt. At this point, does Wanda have the tape on her mouth? No, the tape don't never get on her mouth. Because right. cause Wanda's so big, and I wasn't trying to restrain her like that. You know what I'm saying? Right. So it took, my auntie got on top of her, and she had already put that belt around her leg. So she like, Wanda was on her, she was, yeah, Wanda was on her back. She was on her back. Okay. So she was like, she was like laying on the up, floor? Laying on the floor. Okay. Legs out. Was somebody Excuse holding me. her down? No, her legs was tied up. I was standing on the her side. Her legs were tied up. How did her legs get tied up? Because Auntie ran to the thing and she got a belt and she pulled the belt and she looped it. That's when I was like, oh, so like, she tied oh, her legs, legs with a belt. Okay. She said, Quentin, please, baby, move, get off of me. And I moved and I got off okay. like that. And then my Auntie came left and she was like, hold that big bitch down because she had a gun sitting like on, on the big counter table. And she grabbed it when she came in there when, when it was trying to get up. That's when she went to doing that and then she went to spraying her but when she went and got the stuff she grabbed another belt 
So when she grabbed the where other did, belt, where did uh, Margaret Allen grab the other belt from? She got in her room when you open her door. She got a million fucking belts. She got every belt in the world you could think about to go with every outfit. Mm -hmm. And it was, it was, a, it was a, 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 a straw like kind of belt, like like okay. like cloth. So she of. gets the belt. She comes back. She gives the belt. She come back. Wonder like here no whatever like to keep her off and she study she really thinking when the when this fighting her right but see she's really thinking in other words fighting her off right she okay. really thinking I'm holding Wendell but I'm not holding Wendell because like early before that when, when my auntie walked out of the room Wendell was like she was like baby you ain't got no ties in this she was like just look me in my eye mm -hmm. she said do you think I stole her purse she was like do you think I stole her purse and I just like shook my head or whatever and she was like well she really think I stole her purse on it baby I say she really do think I stole her purse. Just like that. I couldn't even look at it because, I, like I say, I felt bad. I ain't had nothing to do with it. Then when she pulled that gun out, she had me ski. Right, if so she'll do that and she what? said she done did it before. You said she had it earlier. You said she had it on the side. You said she did it pull it from the side or did she have it on her somewhere? She went and snatched it, like, from off the rag and then she came with it. And when she okay. had, like, her knee down on her, I think she pulled that. Uh, and who was she pointing the gun at? She, when she got the gun, she like, she ain't like pointed, but she like slung it around like at me and Wendell, you know what I'm saying? Like one time she was like, hold that big bitch down, shit. So she kind of waved at you? Right, that's what made me scared. I was already scared, that's why. Okay, mm -hmm. I can't remember, don't want to lie at all. I can't remember if- well, I hope you don't lie. No, I'm not lying, not. That's, why I'm, that's why I'm trying to get everything right. Okay. I'm telling you the truth. Okay. That's why I'm making, I'm trying to visualize. Yeah. I don't know if, and you know what would make me believe you're telling the truth? Looking at me instead of looking at the wall. That's fine. Okay. I don't know if TT come in the room or not, right. mm -hmm. or if the belt was on the ground. All I know is when she put her knee into her, after she pulled all that, she was trying to work the belt around the neck. So after she finally got the belt around the neck, okay. she like flipped over. Margaret ain't like got the belt around, around the neck, neck. And she flipped over. Around, and she around it, Wendell's neck. Around Wendell's neck. Okay. So when she hold it, she put it through the loop. She's talking about holding hands, nephew, hold a hand. So, like I say, I'm acting like I'm really holding her hands, but Wendell know, and I know I wasn't holding her hands like that. You feel me? Right. So then, and to get it through the loop, and she pulling, and she pulling, and Wendell like, 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 she like got a hand like this, and she steady like pulling it down, and Auntie steady pulling. So she's study, trying to pull the belt off, off of her neck. And Auntie steady pulling it, steady pulling it. I said, well, Auntie, what is you fucking doing? She told me I'm just gonna pick this bitch unconscious because that bitch got my belt. Okay. So you there you are. Um, I remember. Yeah, she's got the belt around the neck. Around so the neck she's she's she don't to need me. She, she studied pulling the wins. Don't, she, she ain't got no reason to try to fight me. Right. Because Margaret ain't the one who got the thing around her neck. So all she's trying to do is get this off her neck. Okay. So I'm like sitting right here, right beside her against the wall. And I saw I'm like, Auntie, what is you trying to do? She said, my father picked this big bitch unconscious. That bitch ain't motherfucking dead. That bitch ain't unconscious yet. See that bitch faking? She faking. Right. So... Auntie pull it, she gas, she shake, she shake, she shake a little bit. Now she stops shaking. Right. This is while uh, Margaret Allen pulling choking. that thing. So after she stopped shaking, she suddenly stopped shaking. She started start shaking. So Auntie stood hold. I say like thirty seconds to a minute later. Then she say, "Here, nephew, grab this." And I was like, "Grab what?" She like, "Grab, grab this." Grab what? The the the, the um the, the belt. belt. So I grab the belt and I, I like hold it. I don't pull it. I hold it because I know she already out. I, I feel like she did. So I, you're pulling on the belt. I don't pull on the belt. I hold it. You hold it. You hold it taunt. You hold it. Kind not of. at all. Not at all. Because she had already stopped. I felt like she was dead when my auntie did that. Okay. So when she said, so, I hold so you, the belt. You think she's, he, she's yeah, dead my away. auntie had already like after she was like like passed out and stopped. Auntie still hold it for like a minute. Right. And she was studying saying she was faking. Mm -hmm. Then she still hold the belt. So then I just grabbed the belt like this. Mm -hmm. And then she got up and then she tied her legs up. And then I just let the belt Margaret go because I know she, I, like right. I let the belt go because I know it's tied. Up. She put another rope around it. Then she tied her hands up. She was trying to get her hands on the back, tied with a um another belt. Okay. And then she ran. Did she roll her over? You like that to tie your hands behind her back? Yeah, she flipped over. I, yeah, she flipped over because um she was on her back when it first started. Did you so, help her flip her over? Did I help her flip did her over? I mean, she, she weighs an awful lot of, lot of weight. Yeah, but she just, she big. That lady was big. All you got to do is just push that lady. She flipped that over because JT came back. So you helped, helped her, you helped push her over? Push her over. She pushed her okay. over. Then she put her hands behind her back. Then she started tying. Then she tied her arm up. Then she run a, a cord from, she said, go get a sheet. Go get a sheet. So I run the bathroom. I get a sheet. And then she said, where the knife at? So we... We cut the sheet, we cut the sheet, then I give her the sheet. Then she, I said, what you gonna do that? She said, for the tightest bitch up so she won't get out. That's the big bitch. Right. So she tied it from her hands and then ran it straight down to her legs. You see what I'm saying? Okay. So after that, 
I did you help her tie? Yeah, I yeah. helped her tie it once or twice. Like, okay. but she um okay. got the one piece and she was up there and she was tying that. She threw it to me. She was like, here, tie this in, tie this in. Like I said, I didn't know she was dead. I felt like she was dead, but ain't she talking about something she unconscious? I'm in the panic. Okay. She had that gun, I ain't know what to do. Okay. Okay, so after that, her daughter come in the room. See, I still even miss the part because I remember when Auntie couldn't hold her. Titi came in the room, Margaret and daughter, and she was trying to pick the tape on window, but you know how that, the, the gray duct tape, yeah. if you ruffle it with somebody and it stick against something, it's stuck. If it stick against each other, you can't pull it apart like right, that. Right. So she couldn't get no more tape. Like She had like four pieces and the tape fell. So she threw the tape to her little daughter, the 12-year-old, and she was like, here, pull mama some tape, pull mama some tape. Okay. That's why I'm trying to see what T.T. had to see something, because T.T. started pulling the tape. Right, so well, when does laying there dead? Uh as Quentin tells the story of how Wenda's life was taken, he does his best to make it seem as if he did not partake in the crime itself and was only a bystander. Most likely, the detectives realize what he is doing, but they don't want to interfere with his confession. Right now, Quentin believes that he is just a witness. The detectives want to keep it that way. All right, so now uh, you help her roll uh, uh, Wenda over. You help Margaret Allen roll, roll I can't even remember that, but I had to because he was on the two back there, so. Right, okay, and... You help her tie your hands behind her back. Mm -hmm. What was the reason for that if she was already dead? Okay, I felt like she was already dead. But okay. anytime I got ready to say something, my auntie would go into rage. So I wouldn't even say nothing. I said that to Titi. Because right. I know Titi wouldn't tell her mama. You right. see what I'm saying? So that's just what I kept to myself. Right. So therefore, I was thinking that. But every time I said, well, what, what's wrong with auntie? Auntie said, she unconscious. She's like, you know how I feel to be unconscious? I was like, nah, I ain't never been fucking choked out. She said, that's how I be rat fucking done. Okay, so, all right, so now the hands are tied up, what happens next? Um, go in the front room. Who goes in the front room? Me and Margaret Ann. Okay. She had been sent JT out before she even let me plait her hair. So JT didn't get, didn't get to see Auntie beat or anything, you know what I'm saying? He was in the front room sleep, because she was like... He was in the front room sleeping? Right. She had sent him in the front room. She said, because folks, she even said, when the fuck you, um... Before Quentin done doing my plaid, you better have my purse. She told JC, she said, she, she said, JC, go out there and take my speakers out of my trunk. Scan her like she's going right. to put it in the trunk. Okay, but well, let me just stop you for a second. You said while this is all going on, JC is in the front room? JT, yeah, he in the front room. Never down. comes in while nope. the, whole, the commotion's going on? Mm -hmm. She had okay. to went to the, she had to went out the back door of the house and push the deep freeze in her door and then lock the side door. So if she did come, she couldn't run out. Oh, in other words, you, you left the house and you went with... Uh, Right, she told me to bring, she said, come on. She said, come on, we for the ride on right into the house. So I rode around, I rode around up to the house with her. Hey, whose house did you go to? Wendell and Johnny, they stayed like, when like is, that's a block house. away. Okay, right? what was the purpose of going to Wendell's house? Because she said she was going over there to search for the purse. Okay, so you're going to search for the purse with her? She going to search for the purse, because oh. I told her. she. But you like, went with her? Right, because she was like, nephew, um, come on and go in the house, search for the purse. I said, I'm not going in there to search for no purse, auntie. She's talking about why? I said, because I don't want to be seen with you. I don't want nobody to say I was over here to your house. I don't want nothing, 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 nothing. Right. Like that. So she's like, well, you better let your seat back then. So I just let my seat back. How long did you leave the house for? Um, she When she went around there, she didn't go in and search. She said, um, she said, Johnny, um, she said something to Johnny, because Johnny was sitting on the porch and there's a couple other people. She said something to him. And then she said, well, what went to that? Like that. And he was like, I don't know. She ain't bring her ass home yet. That bitch ain't get you with them tears. Something like that. So then Auntie pulled off. We rode around like two or three blocks. I can't remember. And then she was like, nephew, you ain't going no motherfucking well. So I'm like, it's good. I know God sent you over here for a reason. You want to stay right here in this house to help me with this bitch. And she looked back. So I'm looking like, shit, I ain't helping you shit. As soon as I get away, I'm finna get the fuck from over here. So then... Did you end up going to Wendy's house? Did I ever go in there? Yeah. The next day? Well, no, I'm talking about that night when you left. Mm -mm, mm -mm, no. no. Mm -hmm. oh, so then you were supposed to be going, or you were together with uh, Margaret Allen. Right, but she didn't never even go in that night. Oh, she never she went, went in that night previously. Previously. After okay. she had the beat and tied up and we okay. left, she just went over there because she was like, she going to stay there. So... Johnny could think that Wendell was somewhere to the motel getting high and she was like, she'll let that bitch loose tomorrow. By then, she'll tell her what person. Okay. All right, so now you leave the house with Margaret Allen. You, 
the main intention is to go to Wendy's house, but you say you don't go to Wendy's house. We go to Wendy's house. She taught the giant but you, pull out. Okay, but I mean, you, you don't go inside? No. Does uh, Marvin Allen go inside? No. Okay. What happens next? Okay, we hit maybe two or three blocks. Then we pulled back in the driveway, and then somebody pulled up behind us. Then she started talking to that person, and she's like, nephew, don't go nowhere. So then the person who she was talking to wanted to talk to me, so he asked me to get out of the car. So I got out of the car. It's like when they're talking to him, then he got in the car, and they started talking. Mm -hmm. And then she sent him in the house. Like, they went in the house. She locked me out the door. In whose house? Margaret Ann's house. Okay. And she's, she's like, when she went in the house, she's like, stay right here, nephew. Don't go no fucking well. They went in the house. They locked the door. So I'm, like, standing, like, to the door, like, looking, trying to see what the fuck they're in there talking about. So I can't see shit. So I finally get the courage. I knock on the door. Then she open it. So I act like I had to go to the bathroom. And then we went back out of the door. Me, Margaret Ann. Okay. So let me just stop you for a second. This person comes back to the house there, mm -hmm. and he goes into the house. But... Later on down the line, she said, she said, that bitch went dead. She said, that bitch died a day. She said, because um, Eddie said, who is that back there sleeping? And I was like, um, she said, not, I was like, she was saying, I was like, that's that boo. Okay. One of her ex-boyfriends, that's what she said to throw him off. Okay. Because I don't think he made, he must have had to went to the bathroom. And I don't know. That's what she said. He said, I let don't me know. Get a, let me get a little clarification on this now. This guy that she goes into mm -hmm. the house with and, you, and you're outside or whatever. Okay. Who is he? Eddie Grayson. Eddie Grayson? Mm -hmm. Okay. Junior, senior? The baby, the, the, the last one. Junior, I think that is. Okay. So uh, he goes into the house with her. Could he have possibly gone into the room with her? He maybe could have possibly. Nobody? He had to do something. If she, what she said, and this is what she said. That bitch went dead because Eddie said, who is that back there snowing? And I said, Dabu. That's what she said. So obviously he had to go within reaches or he could have went back there. But he could have went back there to ask her, who is that back there sleeping? Because she was on her stomach, tied up. You know what I'm saying? He would have, that would have looked suspicious. Okay. At some point, do you end up leaving? Yeah. When do you leave? I, like, I say my friend get off work at like. How long do you stay there after Grayson arrived? Until I get a chance to leave. How long is that? She was like, um... How long is that? He's, we stayed there. When he pulled up, we was there for like as long as 15, 20 more minutes. And then I said, Auntie, I'll be right back. She said, like, you ain't going nowhere. I said, yes, I am, Auntie. I said, I'll be right back. She said, like, she was not going to fucking come back. I said, yes, I am, Auntie. I'm coming right back. Mm -hmm. So I said, Eddie, give me a ride. He gave me a ride down Park Avenue. And I met my white friend, um, Stephanie Stoner. That's my best friend in the world. Okay. I told her what happened. Mm -hmm. So she was like, um, well, you need to go to the police. I was like, but shit, she gonna try to fucking kill me. She go to my mama house, be around my little sisters or do any fucking thing to them. So she was like, what you just wanna do? I was like, man, I don't fucking know. I got to think, I got to think, I got to think. <laughs> so then we just walked and we smoked that night. And then okay. when we dropped her off, she was like, where you going to Margaret Ann house? I was like, fuck no, I don't fucking go somewhere where that bitch can't fucking come find me at. So, my friend's mistakes. Oh, it had to be 2.30, could have even been 3. She let me in. I stayed the night over there. Okay, 2.30 is 3 in the morning? Mm-hmm. Okay. I slept, I slept. So, so you're, you're talking about now, you're talking about the, the night? Right, so, I, did, night. so I got away from over there because I wasn't going to fucking go back because I had to figure out. Who is Mercedes? Mercedes, Um, you know, Prell, yeah. who got killed. Okay. His, his sister. So, um... I go over there or whatever. Do you tell him? No, right but now? before I go to sleep, I say, I don't tell him all I say. I say, dog, if I go to sleep tonight um, and y'all hear me hollering, I say, will y'all please wake me up? And she laughs. She's like, why? I was like, because I watched a badass movie tonight. I say, and I'm, I think I'm going to have some nightmares. And she was like, okay, I'll wake you up or whatever if I hear you, bitch. So we finally went to sleep. And like I said, I don't like being out because I got warmth. I was only cross because I had to pay my auntie. So... My cousin Nisi comes about 10, 11 that morning. My auntie called my phone at, um, you need to check my Now, when you say your auntie called your phone, you're talking about Marvin Allen again. Okay. Okay, she called my phone by, it had at least be around 6 or 7. In the morning. Right, so when she called that early, I had already assumed, I was like, man, that motherfucking lady is fucking dead. I said, what the fuck she doing calling me this fucking early like that? Because she don't fuck me like that. I had just gave her my fucking cell phone up. Did you talk to her? No, I ain't answer my phone. No, okay. Hell no, I don't want to answer my phone. I ain't got nothing. Uh-uh, uh-uh. I did not answer my phone. Okay, when do you... Does there come a time when you have contact with your aunt again? 
my aunts. Yeah, yeah, uh, Margaret Allen. Yeah, okay. Okay. My, okay, you, go out the door with Mercedes. Your auntie. Right, okay. Margaret Allen. I go right. out the door okay. with Mercedes. My cousin, one of my other cousins, Nisi, pull up. Where, where are you at now? I'm on, on Rock Pick Road at Mercedes' house. Okay. So I leave with Nisi. We're going to, to Crystal's to get something to eat. He told her, don't stop. I say, because I ain't want to be out. Okay. I ain't want to get caught. She saw my little brother, turned around to my she to get more money. Okay. When she pulled up, I looked back. Some say, look back. I looked back. It was a white truck, so it didn't really make me look. But I knew I felt it seemed like I seen my auntie. So then I looked back again, and it's her. So I say, shit, my fucking auntie. So she asked my brother. She's like, Quentin. She was in a truck? She was in, yeah, a white truck. A white truck. Uh, what, what kind of a A pickup, Ford Explorer, something like that. Okay, do you know whose truck it was? I don't even know who truck that is. I don't know. Okay. Did you ever see her brother? Who was her brother? Uh, I, don't know. I don't know. I heard heard, some, heard something about her brother. No. Could that be in her, her brother's truck? Who? Chris? Kevin? Uh, I don't know. You tell me. No, Kevin ain't got no kind of car. If, if, if anything, it probably was cool as long because... That's the only other brother who got cars like okay. that. Okay, so now time. you see her in the truck and right. what happens? She um, asked my brother that if I'm in there, and my brother looked at her and he's like, nah. So um, <laughs> so when he say, nah, I like look back and I'm like, damn, I don't want to fucking act like I'm dodging her because this bitch might flip out and do any fucking thing. So I'm like, I open my door and then somebody stand in the front of her. So I was like, shit, she don't see me. So I shut the door back. So when I shut my door back, shit, she jumped out the truck and like ran to the truck. And she was like, come on, nephew. Come on, right now. I got a motherfucking lick for you. You better bring your ass home. Okay, now this is over by Crystal's? No, this is right this in front is, of the Barbershop. Barber shop. Remember I say my cousin turned around because she saw my brother? Right. Okay, my brother was right there. Okay. A boy named JV was right there. My cousin Nisi was right there. Okay. Okay, they was talking to us through the car window. All right. So, um. So you, she calls you over. She gets out. She gets out and come to the car. So when I see her walk and I just like open the door to play it off, like, what's up? You know what I'm saying? Like I'm calm and collected because I don't want her to right. get suspicious to just want to do anything to me. Right. So she's talking about, come on, I've been motherfucking looking for you all morning. I got a motherfucking lick. I got the credit cards and every motherfucking thing. Come on. So I say, okay, okay, okay. So then I get in. As soon as I get in, she's talking about nephew. You get into the truck. Is I anyone else in the truck with you? JT, guys? JT. JC? Okay. She's talking about that motherfucker bitch dead. Talking about the bitch ain't died till just morning. Cause TT, Margaret and daughter, Letitia's talking about TT told me how to check a pulse and I checked the pulse and she was still breathing. But you really didn't. I say she she did that, but she, if your daughter yeah. tell you to do that, you don't really know how to just go right, right. to the spot and be like, oh, I feel the pulse. Really wasn't done. <laughs> right. So I was like, I was like, Auntie, that fucking lady was dead last night. I told you that lady was dead. She was like, nah, she wasn't dead because she was grunting. She was trying to tell me, but the bitch ain't tell me fast enough where my purse was. One less bitch you gotta worry about. And now she's telling you she's dead. Right. Now she's telling me that she's dead. Okay. So I was like, well, what? She was like, uh, what? We finna go move this motherfucker body because bitch, we in this together. Like that. I was like, in this together. I was like, I ain't fucking kill her, but bitch, we finna move. So she's like, well, bitch, we finna move this motherfucker body. What you scared? Just mm -hmm. like that. So I ain't, at that time, I ain't know if she had a gun on. I know she got a gun. If she just did this in front of this lady in front of me, hell, she could do anything to me. I was already in the truck. Okay. So now, like now I said. Now, uh, where are you in the truck? Are you sitting in the middle or by the uh, window or what? In other words, it's, it's one um, bench seat? I, um, the seats was down. Okay. How many, how many rows of seats are there in that truck? I don't know because they was down. It's two. It got to be two because the two okay. back ones was down and the two front ones was up. Okay. So where were you sitting? So I, remember? Remember, I can't remember if I got in the back or the front. I might, I might have made JT get in the back and okay. I got in the front. Right, that's, that's what I did. That's not important. So go ahead. You get in the truck. Okay. So she tell me that whatever, whatever we get though, she just like, um, <laughs> she's like, well, um, me and JT are ready to, to move the motherfucking body. Talking about we had the bitch halfway on the back of the motherfucking truck and the bitch drop. I had to roll that big bitch back in the house. Cause when I got there, she wasn't even in the same spot. She was all the way down that long ass hall to the back door. Mm -hmm. And she was tied up in a motherfucking arm. Um, she was tied up in carpet. This is your in town, you just no, this is no auntie was telling me that they had already moved by then I had to got to the house. Now when I get to the house I see the lady not in the same spot. Mm -hmm. She on a dolly. So you, you went to the house and you see she's on a dolly. Now, she's on a dolly, dolly. she tied was it a, a hand truck or was a, it some flat? A hand truck. It's a hand truck dolly. A hand truck dolly. She on a she she the lady in the carpet, then she 
she owned a dolly. So then they trying to get the truck. They can't get the truck or whatever to the thing because it was like in an angle. So JT go uh, move. Now, uh, you say the truck. Did they put back the truck up. straight in? Did they, they back it in? Was it front of the house, back of the house, side of the side house? Side of the, like on the side, left hand side back towards the house. Okay, so they so, backed it in? So she back it in. Okay, but you still can't lift it because the dolly that she had on, like the end of that bitch must be moved like, I don't fucking know what that shit was, but it was just heavy as fuck. The end of it was just so heavy. And then dead weight is like what? Super doubled amount of what normal weight is? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, and she backed the truck up. So then. Where were you while she's backing the truck up? I, had, I was already in the house because that's how I had to went through the side though while she backed in. That's how I seen the lady move and all the way down. And I was okay. like, Who's backing the truck up? Marty Dan. Okay. And where was JC? Um, in the truck with him. Okay. So they get out, I go around and unlock that back door when I see a body right there. So then they come in and then she's like, what, nephew, you scared? I was like, hell yeah, I'm scared. I ain't never did no shit like this. I said, I'm not equipped for no shit like this. She was like, this ain't nothing. She was like, ain't nothing just like that. And I'm just like, right up. I just want this shit to fuck up be over, dog. I'm in some hot ass fuck of water. I just, I can't take this shit. So what did she want you to do well, once you back the truck up? She asked you to do something? She wanted me and JT to move the fucking body. Okay. So um, I was like, move the body. And she was like, yeah, move the motherfucker body. Shit, I can't motherfucker get it. Like I said, every time I say something, she'll get aggression. You know what I'm saying? She And then by that time, she did have a gun on. It was still in her fucking pocket. So that's what made me really feel like, shit, what she still need a gun for? She already done killed the lady. And if she wouldn't think about killing me, she don't need no gun no more. Mm -hmm. So then she come over there and then she tie her body down to the thing. Then she give it to me to make me tie one loop. Tie her body down to what thing? Like, cause her body was just laying on the dolly, mm -hmm. and you know, lifting that up, she could, you know, what I'm saying, follow or whatever. Okay. So you're, you're tying it to the dolly. She tying that bitch to the dolly. So when okay. she ties, and you, and you she'll give one piece to me. She'll say, hold this piece, and then she'll go to wrapping it farther around, wrapping it farther around. So then I give her the piece, and then she'll tie, and then she'll be like, there. Yeah. Okay. So then she picked up the front part. Then JT picked up the the side part, and then I picked <laughs> up the front part. Then put it in the back of the truck, and then. She just took the gun out. She act, she paid the floss though, cause she had like her keys. And like I say, I had I had just paid her her money, so she took out like the two hundred dollars. And then she took out the gun and she like set everything on her lap, like she was just like taking her stuff out her park out her pocket. This is inside the truck. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you've already put the body on the back of the truck. Mm -hmm. Did you put the flatbed down or something like that, or did you put yeah, the like I said, it was already down when they came and got me? Okay, they, cause they so had, you helped you helped lift the body up on top. Because they had already tried to do it, but they said they right. dropped it. I just said she had to roll it back in the house. Right, and when you when you lift the body up on top of the truck, do you also lift the dolly up on also. The body was on the dolly. On the dolly, dolly and you lift everything right on top. You, and the, the body is wrapped in a rug. Yeah, wrapped in a burgundy and brown rug or whatever. Okay, so then. And she say, well, what I'm going to do, throw it to the gators? I was like, I don't know. I don't know what you're going to do to her. Like that. She was like, well, y'all bitches better think motherfucker quick because we got to do something. I was like, why you keep saying we? She's talking about because we in this the fuck together. What you mean why I keep saying fucking we? So mm -hmm. like I say, every time I try to say something, she get too aggressive. All right. So all I want to do is just get this fucking shit over with so I can get the fuck from around her. Lady was already dead. I know she had to fucking kill that lady when she said she didn't. I just want to get from around her so I could do whatever I got to do to get me out of the shit. You see what I'm saying? So I won't lose my life before I can get away. Okay, so let me ask you this. So now you guys get into the truck. You, JC, and Margaret Allen. Okay, you said something about she had the gun on her lap? Yes, she had a gun on her lap, pointing my way. She okay. all the stuff out of her uh, Do you discuss where you guys are going to go? No, she just rides. She said, um... She's driving? First, she was like... Is she driving? Yeah, she driving. First, okay. she was like, low's way. And then, she was like, nah. She rolled down one road. She was like, take this bitch on 95 down a little road. And I was like, 95? You for to take her on the highway? She was like, yeah. I was like, oh my God. I was like, auntie, you was fucking tripping. Nah, dog. You was really fucking tripping. So then, she was like, well, we'll take the bitch down 46 on road. So then, she rolled down Carpenter. Then, she rolled in the Orange Grove. I said, like, why you keep passing down these people's house? I said, you think this is just normal to fucking keep doing this like this? Two people looking at they want this to shit. She rolled around the orange girl. She said, nah, this ain't no good spot. And then I, I already know she's trying to be slick. Because I, I said, if anything ever go down, she can't never say, I told her to do a motherfucking thing. So she'll start to say, well, JT, where the bear at? JT say, shit, wherever you motherfucking go, goddammit, that's what we gonna motherfucking dig at. But nephew, where the take her? I said, auntie, I do not know. She found one road. 
I seen the road. She was like, nephew, you seen that road? I was like, uh-uh, and I ain't even pay attention. She's like, okay, well, we finna turn around. Another the road, that's the road that she went. She told me, damn, they go to spot right there. You think that's a good spot, JT? JT told me, yeah, come on, goddamn, because she's straight back here. Okay. Okay, so then she get out. JT started digging. JT started digging. So then I walked to the road or whatever. I just told my bring your motherfucking ass over here, bitch. Like I said, we in this together, and you need to come the fuck on. Okay. So then I walked back over there or whatever. So I was like moving debris, like acting scared at first. Then I see she was like really want me to help. So I just started digging a little bit. Okay. So I'm digging, I'm digging, I'm digging, I'm digging, All right. I'm digging. Is anybody else digging? Marketing and JT. Then she stopped because she had broke her nail or something. She stopped and she went to the car. Uh -huh. And then when she came back this time, she had a gun like like right here. And then she like had her shirt up or whatever. Then she started back like digging again. Okay. Like digging, 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 digging,
Okay, that's who afterwards. That was the first time she ever threatened to shoot you? That was the first time she ever threatened to shoot me. Okay. All right. So now the, the body is buried. Mm -hmm. Okay, you're done. What do you do next? Uh, what do I do? Go take me a long hot shower. Okay, well, wait a minute. Let's, let's, talk about, let's talk about getting back in the truck. Oh. Between we get back in the truck? Yeah, we get back in the truck. Where do you go? She leaves. Soon she hit to like 46. It was no cars coming this way. Like, no cars this way and no cars that way. Yeah, so she yeah. just put off the road and she was like, oh, good, clean way. God is good. Quentin did his best, creating a narrative where he was scared for his life, so he was forced to do things he did not want to do. Quentin would plead guilty to the charges brought against him, and in exchange for testifying against Margaret, he would receive a 15-year prison sentence. Margaret wouldn't be as lucky. She would be found guilty of all charges, and a jury would agree to the death penalty. She is currently sitting on death row, waiting for her turn to pay for her crimes. After Quentin had finished helping Margaret, he called a member of his family and he told them what had just happened. The family member he told decided not to go to the police. Instead, they told Ronald Pickens. Ronald immediately went to the police station to tell them what he had just heard. We will be posting the police interview of Ronald Pickens on our second channel, and the link will be pinned in the comments below. Thank you for watching. I will see you next time here on the Red Tree Crime YouTube channel.